sanctions, mobilization, a crippling war debt, and unsupportable inflation. Do you think that's going to be enough to topple one of the global superpowers in this world? Well, the math seems to be pointing in that direction. Partial mobilization is what you have when the president of the nation decides to mobilize the military forces because of external threats to national security. This mobilization cannot be longer than 24 months. This is what you have in Russia right now. General mobilization is when all of the men are required by law to protect their country from external threats. But how is this partial mobilization affecting the Russian economy in the long term? Well, Putin has stated that they will be mobilizing any man of age that comes to hand to aid in the military mission in Ukraine. So, if any Russian man doesn't have the time to escape from the country when the call for mobilization occurs, they will have to serve in the Russian military. This is where we found the first blow to the Russian economy. This mobilization could spell trouble for Russia. Small businesses will be forced to close down their stores because they lack the necessary labor. Entrepreneurs say that big businesses in the country will not have a problem with this. They will still be able to replace the men in their company with a female workforce, and the problem will be solved. But that's not the case for small businesses. They're not as profitable as big businesses, and they don't have the funds to hire two people instead of one. After all, we have to remember that the Russian economy is not a service-based company. It's mainly based on manual labor. That's because Russia needs a strong workforce to extract all the minerals and natural resources that the country has at its disposal. To make matters worse, because the mobilization will usually hit the poor classes of people in the country, most of them will be forced to smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, they will be forced to flee. Generally speaking, they do not want to be serving in the Russian army. In other words, not only will a major chunk of the workforce be mobilized in the war, another large part will run away from the country, further reducing Russia's working population. But this will not take effect immediately. To see the effects of this, some experts are saying that we will need at least three to four months. This is because some of the service-based jobs will not be affected. And if you thought this is where Russia's trouble ends, you'd be wrong. The Russian parliament is going to waive all loans from the mobilized Russian population. The repayment of those loans has to come from somewhere. And this is where the taxpayers will be carrying the hardest burden. However, don't think that a mobilization economy benefits big businesses. If the big businesses stay in the country while Russia is still at war with Ukraine, their reputation is decreasing. Some specialists are even urging big business owners to sell all of their assets and move out of the country before they do irreparable damage to their reputations. Still, that's easier said than done. Some people are even losing hope in the government when hearing analysts say that the modern 20s will be worse than the 90s of the previous century for Russia. It's becoming pretty clear that the objectives of the Russian government and the concerns of the people are not aligned. It's pretty clear that the country is headed for one of the deepest recessions in recent years. What about the sanctions? Are they working right now? Well, some would argue that these sanctions did nothing to the Russian economy and say that the country is just as good as ever. But that's not entirely true. Since February of 2022, Russia has been hit with package after package of sanctions and major sectors of their economy are hurting. Sure, the people aren't starving. But how will their major companies recover from this debilitating blow after the war ends? For example, Putin needs a lot of high-tech chips for his arsenal, but he can't find the right suppliers. Car manufacturers are down, and they are producing Russian cars without airbags and some other necessary safety equipment. The aviation industry is slowly grinding to a halt. The restricted airspace is just the beginning. Aviation giants need spare parts for their planes but the spare parts aren't coming. Therefore, the planes are parked in hangars and are waiting for much needed repairs. The inflation has been declining since April. So from the high teens of 17.5%, it dropped to 15 in the summer. And in October, the inflation rate hovered at around 12.6%. And they're doing all of this while the Russian central bank is cutting their interest rates in order to fight against the impending recession. So, 
They have mobilization plaguing the economy. They have sky-high inflation, and they have been sanctioned into the Stone Age from Europe. How are they still functioning and funding this so-called special military operation? The simple answer? Oil and gas. Natural gas and oil remain Russia's primary export source and a major revenue stream for the government. Not only that, they have been preparing for this war since 2010, and now they were finally ready. On top of that, Putin was aware that almost the entire European continent is dependent on Russian oil and gas. Because of the war, the prices of these inelastic commodities shot through the roof, and Russia didn't stop producing. In fact, they smashed that subscribe button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, seriously now, what they really did was they increased production and in just the first 100 days, they have made over $100 billion from exporting natural gas and oil. And even though Europe wanted to stop buying oil and gas, they couldn't. The diminishing demand for their oil was offset by India and China, who agreed to buy more after they offered them huge discounts something like 30%, but Russia could afford to give a 30% discount because the prices were up almost 100% compared to last year. They were still getting around 1.5 times what they would have been getting in 2021. So Putin was happy, but when the price of oil goes down, Russia will have a problem. The panic around the demand for oil is going down and OPEC is limiting the supply of oil, which will in turn hurt the Russian economy. At this point, Russia should start panicking. They will see that they no longer have the revenue growth that they were experiencing at this moment. At the moment, Europe is planning on setting a price cap on Russian oil imports. How can they possibly do this? Well, one suggested way is through insurance companies, because most of the oil throughout the world is transported on large ships. Those ships need to be insured. That's international law. The bad news for Russia is that the majority of the insurance companies are based in the US and Europe. The plan is to only insure tankers transporting oil below a certain price point, forcing Russia to sell their oil to India and China below the agreed upon price cap. Transporting gas is even more challenging. Why? Because to transport gas, you need giant pipelines. If Russia loses its customers in the West, it will not have the time or resources to build another pipeline for the nations of Asia. This would take a lot of time and money, which, if we're being honest, Russia has neither of. So if Europe stops buying gas from Russia, it will experience a serious dent in its revenue, and this would be catastrophic for the economy and its people. They would be unable to fund the war effort in Ukraine, and all of the problems that we talked about earlier will catch up to them very quickly. Again. Only time will tell if Russia will go bankrupt. But the situation doesn't look like it's going to get any brighter if Putin's war effort doesn't change. You'll love these videos next.